This blog is a continuation of low voltage electrical wiring found in residential homes. Most of it applies to any installation that uses a 120, 240 AC volt supply. We will begin this blog by going over the different types of electrical boxes. Electrical boxes are critical components of your home's electrical system. But for many do-it-yourselfers, the wide variety of boxes is bewildering. There are plastic and metal boxes, new work and old work boxes, round, square, and octagonal boxes, and boxes with load ratings for ceiling fans and heavy light fixtures. All of the most commonly used boxes for home wiring projects, are available at home centers and large hardware stores, and it's important to know the differences in order to buy the correct boxes. There are a number of options to consider, material, shape, size etc. Most electrical boxes are either metal or plastic. Metal boxes are generally made of steel, while plastic boxes are either PVC or fiberglass. Weatherproof metal boxes for outdoor use are generally made of aluminum. If you are using metal conduit to run wiring to the electrical box, then a metal box is required, both to anchor the conduit, and because the conduit and metal box system itself may be used to ground the system. If you are using non-metallic cable, such as type NMB, non-metallic sheathed cable, then you can use either plastic boxes or metal boxes, as long as the cable is secured to the box with an appropriate cable clamp. Modern wiring systems with NMB cable usually include a ground wire inside the cable, so the box is not part of the grounding system, however, metal boxes, must be connected to the system ground, usually with a short length of wire called a pigtail. Like standard rectangular boxes, these are used to hold household switches and electrical outlets, but they are oversized so that two, three, or four devices can be mounted side by side. Like other boxes, these come in a variety of new work and old work designs. Some with built-in cable clamps. The same effect can be created by using standard rectangular boxes with a gangable design that allows the sides to be removed so the boxes can be joined together to form larger boxes. Round pan or pancake boxes, typically are only half inch or three quarters inch deep. They are used most commonly for ceiling or wall-mounted light fixtures that weigh no more than 50 pounds. Some types of specially rated metal pan boxes may be used for mounting ceiling fans, but not all pan boxes may be used for this purpose. It's important that the fixture wires can be properly connected, and fitted within the round pan box. These are shallow electrical boxes with only enough space for fitting two or three electrical connections. If there are more wire connections to be made, you will probably need a full-sized octagon or round electrical box with more volume. The number of wires in the box should never exceed its safe fill capacity. Square boxes come in standard depths of 1 and 1 quarter to 2 and 1 eighth inches, but their square corners give them additional interior space, providing maximum volume for multiple conductors and connectors. For this reason, 4-inch square boxes often are used to run multiple conductors in two or more directions. They are also commonly used as junction boxes, and can also be installed in ceilings or walls for supporting lighting fixtures or for housing switches or receptacles, when matched with the proper cover plates. This is also known as a junction box. It is not a special type of box, but rather a term used to describe any standard electrical box used to enclose wire splices. The standard box used for junctions, is a 4-inch square box, which offers plenty of space for making wire connections with multiple wires or cables, but other type of boxes can be also used for this application. Junction boxes must be installed where they are always accessible. Never install a junction box in a concealed wall, or ceiling space, where the box cannot be accessed in the future. Junction boxes also must be covered with solid covers with no holes. Electrical box covers come in a wide variety of sizes and shapes, to match different types of boxes. A cover is used to enclose the front of the box and is required by code. It is unsafe, and usually illegal, to leave an electrical box uncovered. Solid, or blank, covers have no holes and typically are used with junction boxes, or for enclosing unused boxes. Covers for 4-inch square boxes, may have special cutouts or knockouts to accommodate switches or receptacles, outlets. These typically include a raised center area that extends the box so the opening for the switch or outlet will be flush with the exposed surface of the drywall or other wall or ceiling finish. Weatherproof, outdoor boxes, are sealed enclosures, designed for mounting to the surface of exterior walls, roof overhangs, decks, and other structures. They are used for installing outdoor receptacles, outlets, and light fixtures. Outdoor boxes must have an outdoor cover, or fixture rated for damp or wet locations, depending on the application. Plastic outdoor boxes are usually made from high-impact PVC, while metal outdoor boxes are typically made from aluminum rather than steel. 
box extenders, or extension rings, come in a variety of sizes and shapes to match standard electrical boxes. They are shaped like boxes but have no back. They are designed to be installed onto the front of standard electrical boxes to increase the box capacity or to bring the box flush with the drywall or other surface material. The National Electrical Code, NEC, dictates that no wiring splices are allowed outside of an approved enclosure. Any standard outlet, switch box, or light fixture box, can serve as an approved enclosure, but where a wiring splice, needs to occur in other locations along the circuit, the approved enclosure is usually a junction box. A junction box is simply a standard electrical box, that is mounted securely to house framing or another structure, containing the connection or, splice, of two or more circuit cables. The cables are secured to the box with cable clamps, or conduit connectors, if the circuit includes conduit, and the box must have a removable cover, to create a complete enclosure. Junction box covers must remain accessible, they cannot be covered with drywall or other surface material. A junction box is most often used where an electrical circuit branches off in two or more directions from a location where an outlet, or fixture is not practical. It is also a common solution when an electrical circuit is being extended. Make sure to buy a junction box appropriate for your installation. Outdoor locations, for example, require a weatherproof junction box, with gaskets to prevent moisture intrusion. And, make sure the junction box is large enough for the number of wiring connections you will be making. For example, the smallest 2 by 4 by one and a half inch deep box can comfortably splice only two cables, four or five conducting wires, while the largest 4 by 4 by two and one eighth inch deep boxes can handle as many as four to six cables, up to 18 individual conducting wires. For easy installation, many do-it-yourselfers choose the largest box that is practical for the application. A knockout is a partially stamped opening in electrical enclosures that allows quick entry of a wire, cable or pipe, via connector or fitting, to the interior. With the right information and technique, you should be able to remove a knockout from electrical panels and other electrical enclosures without any problems. Of course, ensure that the wires you're going to be dealing with are not powered. Switch off all suspect breakers and use a suitable meter or tester to ensure that power is off, reducing the chance of shock or burns. Locate the knockout stamping size to fit the desired connector, or fitting. There will likely be several knockouts of different sizes on more than one surface from which to choose. Pick the one that will be easiest to connect the cable or pipe. Some switch boxes have slots in the knockouts for easy removal using a slotted screwdriver. These switch boxes usually have built-in clamps for securing the cable once entering the knockout location. When installing cables to junction boxes, separate the circuit wires at the existing splice, and loosen the cables as needed to make room for the new junction box. Anchor the box to the framing, or other support structure, with screws or nails driven through the factory-made holes in the back or side of the box, as applicable. Install a cable clamp for each cable, as needed. Standard plastic electrical boxes do not have knockouts and contain internal cable clamps. Metal boxes usually have internal clamps. If yours does not, install a lock nut type clamp for each cable. Insert the threaded end of the clamp through a knockout hole, and secure the clamp inside the box with the ring-shaped nut. Tighten the nut with pliers. Join the wires together with approved wire connectors, following the manufacturer's instructions. Feed the cables through the clamps and into the box. The cable sheathing, outer jacket, should extend one quarter to half of an inch into the box beyond the clamp, and the individual conducting wires should extend about six inches into the box. If necessary, trim the wires as needed, and strip three quarters of an inch of insulation from the end of each wire using wire strippers. Secure the cables by tightening the screws on the clamps, being careful not to over-tighten and damage the cables. Plastic boxes usually have spring tabs for clamps and do not require tightening. The ends of the individual wires should be clean, straight, and undamaged, with no more than three quarters of an inch of exposed wire beyond the insulation. Trim any damaged wires and strip insulation as needed using wire strippers. Join the bare copper, or green insulated, ground wires together first. If the box is metal, Add a pigtail, a 6-inch length of the same type of ground wire, to the ground wire connection, then connect the loose end of the pigtail to the ground screw on the box. Special green wire nut connectors are generally used to join the grounding wires together. However, the same type of wire connector can be used for all the connections. Join the white, neutral, wires together, then join the black, hot, wires together, using a wire nut or other approved connector for each wire pair. If there are red wires, join them together as well. 
confirm that all wires are secure by gently tugging on each wire. Carefully fold the wires into the box. Install the box cover, securing it with two screws. The code requires that the cover must be solid and blank without holes. Restore power to the circuit by switching on the circuit breaker. In your home's wiring system, the power is normally carried by the hot wires to the load, while the neutral wires provide a return path to the source after the load. Both sets of wires enter your home through the utility's main service wires, running through your electrical service panel, and run side by side through every circuit in your home. Should some breakdown of the pathway occur, the power may instead flow through other materials, such as metal framing, metal pipes, or conducting but flammable materials in your home. This is what may happen in a short circuit situation, where most electrical fires and shocks originate. A short circuit is when electricity strays outside the wires that it is supposed to flow through. In other words, when it takes a shorter path. To prevent this danger, your home's electrical system includes a backup plan, a system of grounding wires that runs parallel to the hot and neutral wires. It provides an alternate pathway for electrical current to follow should there be a breakdown in the system of hot and neutral wires that normally carry the power. If a wire connection becomes loose, for example, or a rodent gnaws through a wire, the grounding system channels the stray current back to ground by this alternate pathway before it can cause a fire or shock. The grounding pathway is generally formed by a system of bare copper wires that connect to every device and every metal electrical box in your home. In standard sheathed NM cable, this bare copper wire is included along with the insulated conducting wires inside the cable. The bare copper grounding wires terminate in a grounding bar in your main service panel, and that grounding bar is in turn connected to a grounding rod driven deep into the earth outside your home. This grounding system provides a path of least resistance for electricity to follow back to ground should a break in the wiring system allow electricity to leak out of the preferred system of black and white circuit wires. In some instances the code requires electrical cables to have mechanical protection, in which case rigid conduit or flexible metal clad cable must be used, metal clad, MC, cable is easier to work with, than rigid conduit, and offers protection from fire, vibration, gnawing pests and physical harm in general. Metal clad cable comes in several varieties, but the type you'll find most commonly has three insulated wires, two circuit conductors and a green or bare equipment grounding conductor, protected by a flexible armor, usually made from aluminum. MC cable is identified by the gauge of the wire, not the diameter of the armor. The most common sizes are 14 gauge, 12 gauge, and 10 gauge. MC cable is used only with metal boxes. Plastic or fiberglass electrical boxes aren't designed to be used with MC cable. Even if you're able to rig up a connection to a plastic box, you will fail the electrical inspection. Make sure the metal box has knockout holes located where you need them, and don't rely on the spurs on the bracket to hold the box in place, add a couple of screws as well. Flexible metal conduit, FMC, is commonly called greenfield or just flex. The main difference between MC cable and FMC is that FMC doesn't have the insulated wires pre-installed. You have to pull them through after the fact. This requires more work, but gives you the option of pulling and protecting more than one circuit in the same conduit. It also allows you to add wires in the future, something you can't do with MC cable. FMC is identified by its diameter. The most common sizes are half inch, three quarters inch, and one inch. Liquid tight flexible conduit is installed wherever the wiring will be subjected to wet conditions. Liquid tight flexible conduit is water resistant and is available without the wires installed and in short lengths or whips that come pre-wired. There are two common types. Liquid tight flexible metal conduit and liquid tight flexible non-metallic conduit. Liquid tight flexible conduit applications include HVAC equipment, machine tools, marine equipment, motors and controls, printing equipment, pumps, refrigeration equipment, transformer connections, and outdoor lighting. If you have just one or two cuts to make and don't want to invest in a cutting tool, bend the MC cable sharply until the armor pops open, and then use that opening to start the cut with side cutter pliers. You only need to nip cut through one section in the armor. This method will leave a jagged edge that will need to be trimmed after the armor is separated, and the cut ends of the MC cable will be sharp, so be sure to wear gloves. If you have a lot of cuts to make, a rotary cutter works best for MC cable. Cutting the armor without damaging the wires is probably the trickiest part of working with MC cable. The best method is to use an armored cable rotary cutter. This tool uses a small cutting disc, powered by a hand crank and will cut only through the armor, leaving the wires undamaged every time. 
you can attach a connector to MC cable, then join it to the box, but it's easier to mount the connector on the box before feeding the wires through. Connectors like those shown above are popular with electricians because the one screw secures both the connector to the box and the MC cable to the connector. There should be a minimum of 6 to 8 inch of exposed wire inside the box. In order to protect the conductors from damage caused by the sharp ends of the cable, plastic anti-short bushings are used. Even if the connector you're using has its own bushing, make sure to add a bushing like the one shown here. It's a cheap and easy way to achieve an extra level of protection. Some manufacturers supply a bag of anti-short bushings when you buy the cable, or you can buy a pack for a couple of dollars. When removing a section of armor to expose the wires, twist the short end of cable counterclockwise as you pull the cable apart. If it feels like it's taking too much pressure to separate, double-check that the cut went all the way through the armor. Don't pull too hard or the armor could separate farther down the line. That's a problem because damaged armor shouldn't be installed, and you'd have to start over. Make sure the box is grounded. Whether it's the first box in a line, or the only one on an entire circuit, every metal box needs to be grounded. Grounding a box is as simple as connecting the incoming and outgoing ground wires to a pigtail, and then connecting the pigtail to the box with a grounding screw. Secure the MC cable, with clamps, such as these single hole straps, that make it easy to provide sturdy support. Avoid connecting them with nails, or you'll risk smashing and damaging the cable with a hammer. Install a strap within 12 inches of each box. All subsequent straps need to be within 6 feet of each other. When you're routing cables, be sure to avoid sharp bends that could damage the cable sheath or the conductors. Any home handyman who has undertaken any electrical work has used wire nuts. A wire nut is a device that aids in the connection of a group of electrical wires. It not only holds the joint secure, but provides insulation for the mechanical wire joint. It should be noted that wire nuts, is a trademark of ideal industries, but like Kleenex, it has become the primary identification for the product. Many manufacturers make similar products, under their own trade names and trademarks. Making tight electrical connections is critical to a safe wiring job. If wires come loose, you could get arcing and overheating, which could lead to a fire. It also means that the circuit may be interrupted, that is, it will not work. But, thanks to reliable connectors and terminals, it's fairly easy to make safe, strong connections. Still, there are a few things you have to watch out for. Picking the right connector for the job, and preparing the wires is important for the best connection. With careful attention to detail, you can rest easy, knowing your wiring job is as safe as you could possibly make it. When preparing wires to be connected. Cut off nicked, bent or twisted ends. Wires that are bent twisted or nicked, are weaker and won't nest together as easily in the connector. Before you reconnect or rejoin several wires with a connector, cut off the old bare ends. Strip the insulation to expose clean, straight wire. Extend the ends of all stranded wires about 1 8 inch beyond the solid wires. Then install the wire nut connector as usual. If you hold the ends of solid and stranded wire even with each other, while you screw on the wire nut connector, the stranded wire will often wrap loosely around the solid wires, resulting in a loose connection. This is especially likely when you're joining multiple solid wires, to one stranded wire. When installing the wire connector, arrange the wires parallel to each other with their ends aligned. Place the wire nut connector over all of the wires. Keep your eye on the wire ends until the connector covers them to make sure none slips out of position. Twist the connector until the insulated wires outside the connector begin to twist. Tug on each wire to make sure they are secure. Wire nut connectors come in many sizes, and every wire nut connector is made to join a certain minimum and maximum volume of wires. The larger the wire gauge, the fewer it can hold. Check the list on the wire nut connector packaging to make sure your combination of wires is safe. Even though the connectors appear to be color-coded, you can't rely on this. You have to check the label on the package or go to the manufacturer's website to find out. Keep a range of small to large wire nut connectors and their packaging on hand, so you won't be tempted to make do with the wrong size. New to the electrical industry, is the Wago Lever Nuts, 221 series. Which is providing a better alternative to the wire nut. With the 221 series compact splicing connector for all conductor types, Wago provides electricians with a fast, easy, and safe way to terminate solid, stranded, and fine stranded conductors without tools. The 221 series portfolio includes 
two, three, and five wire connectors in 12 and 10 AWG maximum, four millimeter squared and six millimeter squared versions. The original model connectors accommodate all conductor types ranging from 24 to 12 AWG. The 10 AWG model connects all conductor types ranging from 20 to 10 AWG. This flexibility permits a wide range of applications, especially when conductors of different types and sizes are used together. Wiring is simple. First, strip the conductor according to the strip length guide printed on the side of the connector housing. Open the clamping unit via the easy to use lever, insert conductor, then simply lower the lever to close the clamp. The transparent housing permits visual inspection of the conductor position. It clearly shows that conductors have been stripped and inserted properly. A gas-tight contact point provides a durable and secure connection between the conductor and the current bar. Furthermore, two easily accessible test ports, one in the conductor entry direction and one opposite of this, simplify testing, even when installed. The 221 series has an operating temperature rating of 105 degrees Celsius, making it ideal for a variety of industrial environments. These connectors are CULUS listed according to UL486C. Benefit from economical installations with Wago's 221 series splicing connector for all copper conductor types. With a wire stripping tool, stripping the ends of the wires becomes an easy and quick task. Check the label on the connector package for the length of bare wire to expose. For all but the smallest and largest connectors, this is usually about half to 5 eighths inches. This information, as well as other related electrical blogs, may be found on my website at https colon forward slash forward slash www.getpspt.com. There you also have access to my courses which are continuously being added to end at the present time include the following. This is the end of this presentation.